What is going on everybody? Dan with Gear Focus here and welcome back to another video. It's been quite some time since I've seen you guys last and the last video that I did was about videography basics. So to kind of counter that, today we're gonna to be talking about some photography basics. Let's go ahead and jump right in. In our video basics tutorial, we talked about three main topics, and those three topics were your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO, and how they pertained to video. So today we're gonna to talk about those three same topics, but we're gonna show you how they affect your photography. So let's start first with our aperture. When you look at your camera, either through the viewfinder or on the back of the screen, you're gonna see a number at the bottom that has an F, and then a slash, and then some number. That is your aperture, and that's measured in f-stops. The aperture controls how much light is hitting your sensor. A lower aperture number means that your iris, or the physical mechanism that is closing down and opening up, is wider, which means more light is gonna hit your sensor. And a higher number means that iris is closed down, which means less light. Now there is a side effect to changing your aperture, and that's known as depth of field. Essentially what depth of field is, is the separation between your in-focus objects and your out-of-focus objects. With a lower aperture number when your iris is open real wide, you're going to have a shallower depth of field. So you're going to have your subject stand out from your background more. So let's take a look at this shot of a tape measure. With a wider aperture or a lower f-stop number, you can see that only a fraction of the tape measure is in focus. Now, if I close that aperture down, that's gonna increase my depth of field, which is gonna mean that more of that tape measure is in focus. However, the downside of that is I now have less light and you can see that the image is now significantly darker. Now that's where the other two settings come into play. So next let's talk about our shutter speed. Your shutter speed measures the amount of time per second that light is gonna be hitting your sensor. So when you look at your camera, that's the fraction that you're gonna see next to your aperture reading. Most cameras will allow you to have your shutter open for a few seconds all the way down to a few hundredths of a second. The longer that that shutter is open, the more light we are going to get into our camera's sensor. Now there is a side effect associated with shutter speed as well, and that is your motion blur. If your shutter is open for too long, your high motion objects in your frame are gonna end up blurry like this picture that I took at the skate park the other day. This was taken with a shutter of 1 over 200, and you can see that these skaters' arms are completely out of focus and they're just completely blurry. Now if I increase my shutter speed to 1 over 800, like I did in this shot, you can see that everything in that shot is tack sharp and there is no motion blur. And the reason for that is because a fast shutter means that it is taking a picture of a smaller portion of time. Now there are definitely gonna be situations where you're gonna to wanna to leave your shutter open for a long period of time, and those are known as long exposures. The most common use for long exposures is night shots like this one that I took down in North Carolina a few weeks ago. When you have your shutter open for multiple seconds at a time, or in this particular instance for 30 seconds, you capture a lot more light, which means you can see the small individual little stars. So let's talk about that last main setting, which is our ISO. Now, the best way to think about your ISO is kind of like a volume knob. What the ISO does is controls the amount of voltage that goes across your camera sensor. So with a higher ISO number, you're gonna increase that voltage, and with a lower ISO number, you're going to decrease that voltage. Now, like with the other two settings, there is a caveat that comes into play with your ISO. The more voltage that goes across your sensor means you're going to introduce more noise into your image, which is not going to necessarily look as good as a clean image. If you crank that ISO too high, you run the risk of completely ruining your image. If you find yourself having to crank your ISO, do your best to add more light to the scene. Now, obviously there are going to be times where you can't add more light to the scene, so you're gonna have to use the other two settings to kind of adjust your exposure to get the proper shot. Now, I do wanna mention that there are gonna be times when you're gonna have too much light coming into your camera. Typically that happens when you're shooting outdoors or midday or something like that. This is where ND filters come into play. Essentially the way to look at an ND filter is as like sunglasses for your camera. If you wanna learn more about ND filters, check out this video right here. 
All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me today. I really hope you enjoyed this one. And if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them down in those comments down below. And while you're down there, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button as it really does make a difference for us here on the channel. I do wanna mention that next time you guys see me, things are gonna look a little bit different. So until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay creative. Peace.